the scenes of the first exquisite time we live when we first arrived in Hong Kong. The first Sunday after we arrived in Hong Kong, my stepmother took us for a walk down Prince Edward Road. I remember climbing the steps of what looked to be just an ordinary building. On the second floor, we rang the doorbell. The Robertsons and the Akis greeted us. It was the mission home. I heard the sound of beautiful piano music in another room and felt it was a recital. But I soon learned that the church meeting was about to begin. After the music and opening prayer, President Robertson stood and gave a talk in English, which was translated by President Aki into a Cantonese dialect. Unfortunately, having just arrived from China, I spoke only Guinness and Mandarin and understood neither English nor Cantonese. Yet, the spirit was strong and I felt calm and peaceful. The next day, my stepmother Joyce instructed me, Laura, since you are the oldest, take care of your younger sister's solution home every Monday morning. Sister Aki will teach you something, and I'm expecting you also to learn even little English at the same time. Our sessions with Sister Aki usually opened with prayer, then she would read us curious Bible stories in English, beginning with the creation. And the brother Aki would faithfully translate for Sister Aki every day. His village dialect was still very difficult to comprehend. After a few sessions, I decided that I needed to at least try to learn something from brother and sister Aki. After all, I always felt good when we visited them at the meeting house. So I started hiding frequently in our common bathroom at home where I knelt and prayed several times during the day, morning and night, without interruptions and without being loved. Heavenly Father, I ask thee to bless me that I can learn English and to understand Sister Aki. I also ask thee to help me speak English like how the missionaries speak. Finally, one Sunday in December, after having faithfully attended church every day for over a year, President Robertson popped the question and asked the three of us, Are you girls ready to be baptized? I immediately responded, Yes. And since I was the oldest, my sisters followed my example and nodded yes as well. Now go home and ask your grand aunt. However, because I was afraid that grandma would not come I went home and kept myself busy in the chores around the house all day, hoping to avoid her by trying to determine what to do and how to proceed. That afternoon, the missionaries, including brother and sister Aki, appeared at our doorstep. They had come to visit Burma, and I immediately knew why. I was so scared that I ran into the bathroom, knelt down, and said a fervent prayer, Heavenly Father, I ask thee to bless Burma that you will allow us to be baptized. She did. My two sisters, Beatrice and Rose, and myself, three little girls from the Pope family, were baptized on December 31, 1950. Not only were was the first baptism to occur in the mission, but as far as I know, we were the first converts to the church in Tower of China. I have great memories of that happy day. I was baptized by Elder James Carn Kong and confirmed by President Robertson. It was winter and cold. Because we did not have a baptismal font for any rivers nearby, we were baptized in the chilly outdoors beneath a small waterfall flowing down the mountainside at Diamond Hill. Sister Robertson, afraid that we might catch a cold, Asked Sister Aki to bring lots of blankets, but I remember that I had no need for them. 
As I changed out of my wet baptismal clothes behind some nearby bushes, my body felt warm all over. I thought to myself, tomorrow is a new day, and I am a new person. My soul was happy and free. The joy I felt is difficult to describe, but the spiritual warmth of that winter day has always remained with me. The second baptism occurred in mid-January 1951, at which time 15 more people were baptized, including my aunt. Our total membership had now risen to 18. However, just as the good things of the Western gospel were beginning to spread, the work in Hong Kong was suddenly interrupted. The mission was abruptly closed because of the Korean War and all of the missionaries and leaders were recalled to the States. That was a sad day. The eight of us new members were left with only one group of women in English. No sacrament, no building to gather in, and no meetings of any kind. We were like a handful of discarded sand. In 1935, the Sky Line was instructed by President Mackay to tour the missions in Japan and Korea. While in the Asia area, President Mackay also asked elderly to walk by Hong Kong and see how the saints were doing there. When President Lee arrived, he gathered us together in his hotel room. President and Sister Lee were accompanied by President and Sister Williamson. The next morning, the saints were doing here. When President Lee arrived, he gathered us together in his hotel room. Press any kind. We were like a handful of discoveries. In 1954, President Harold B. Lee was instructed by President Mackay to pull the missions in Japan and Korea. While in the Asia area, President Mackay also asked elderly to go by Hong Kong and see how the saints were doing there. When President Lee arrived, he gathered us together in his hotel room. President and Sister Lee were accompanied by President and Sister Robinson. We visit for sure. Only if we President and Sister Lee were accompanied by President 
and Sister Robinson. We are busy for sure. Only enough time for us to have the same story going there. From President Lee of Transcend Japan and Korea. While in the Asia area, President Mackay also asked elderly to drop by Hong Kong and see how the saints were doing there. When President Lee arrived, he gathered us together in his hotel room. President and Sister Lee were accompanied by President and Sister Robertson. Their visit was short. Only enough time for us to have a single sacrament meeting together. The next morning after the meeting, Ernie and his party had to instruct us to meet for the airport. Knowing of their departure, I had gone to the hotel to see them all. As we were waving and exchanging goodbyes, I still saw a voice that only came to the right side of my ear and whispered as far as if someone who was standing next to me. The door was already in the energy of the scene. The quiet voice simply said, Tell him to stand the church now. I knew that everybody was an important person in the place, but it was not yet all acquainted with church ceremony and administration. Because there was no one around me, I was also not sure about what I had just heard. So I responded out loud to the voice. What? Then I understand the church that came the anonymous response of the day. And I cannot recall, I obeyed the invisible voice prompting. I stretched my arm up to the window of the bus to hold the elderly's hand so that the bus would not leave. President Lee responded by stretching out his hand, thinking that I wanted to say goodbye. At that moment, with tears flowing freely, I uttered the heartfelt play in English. Please send the church back to China. We saints without the church are like people without food. Then his tears came to me. As elderly wept, and comforted me, he replied tenderly, It is not for me to decide, but I will report to the brethren. He offered a few more words of encouragement and admonished me to keep the faith and pray on the bus door away. I heard nothing more for some time, and it seemed as if nothing would happen for an eternity. However, in 1955, less than a year after elderly Liz 